Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. I was up pretty late last night. I'm going to be up late tonight. Uh, good morning, everyone. And on this uh, Christmas Eve, Merry Christmas to everyone. It's great to have you here on this fourth Sunday in Advent uh, as we get ready to uh, welcome, uh, once again, as we get ready to celebrate the birth of our Lord tonight at our Christmas Eve services. It's great to have you here tonight today. As we uh, have a, a different service than what we would normally uh, do, you're familiar with the hymn, O Come Emmanuel. Well, today we are using that hymn as both a prayer and our readings for, for the day. Uh, we'll be singing through that, but we'll be, we will also be walking through that, uh, that hymn. And it's uh, actually an old tradition that goes way back um, to the early part of the church where people used this hymn uh, as a way of preparing themselves for Christmas. And so we join with the ancient church today as we uh, prepare for our worship this evening. As we uh, begin our worship this evening, or this morning, I, I hope I can get over that. We do have three services this evening at 1 at 5. It's a family-oriented service. Uh, we have another service at 8. It's lessons and carols. And then at 9, we will have our, or at 11, excuse me, we will have our um, candlelight service with Holy Communion. So hopefully you can make it to one of those three services if you're not uh, going off to uh, another place where your family is going to be celebrating Christmas. Please join us this evening. We rise now as we face the cross and remember that we are baptized children of God. We begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart to confess our sins unto God our Heavenly Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us His forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made, who made heaven and earth. In this season of penitence and reflection, let us think of our unworthiness and confess before God that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, asking for His merciful forgiveness. God Almighty, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, He has mercy upon us and has had mercy upon us and given His only Son, our Emmanuel, to die for us, and for his sake, forgives our sins. May this God of peace himself sanctify us completely, and may our whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is in his stand and by his command that I announce to you that all of your sins have been forgiven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The candles on our Advent wreath remind us that Jesus Christ came into the world to conquer the darkness of sin and to lead us into the light of his glorious kingdom. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Whoever follows him will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Today we light the angel's candle, the candle of love, reminding us that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all people. We acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and so we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. The candles on the Advent wreath are in a circle because they represent an unending expression of God's love for us and a complete fulfillment of his love. We love because he first loved us, and this commands we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love him. Hey, Jackson, come on up. So this Advent season, we've been using this star to kind of share our children's messages. At the beginning of the season, we talked about how these lines at the top meet up and they point which direction? They point up, which reminds us that Jesus came down from heaven. He's up and he came down. And that's how God met us where we were, when we were running around so busy trying to get everything done so we would have peace this Christmas season. But God's the one who brought us peace by bringing Jesus down from heaven. And then we talked about these points that go out to the side, and St. Nicholas helped us remember that it's so important to reach out to other people with the love that God has given us. And today, you see I've got the bottom part of my star highlighted because we're going to just fill the whole star in. And I'm going to give you guys some paper and a pencil, and you can help me. And um, Arizona, maybe you want to help me stick some things on my star up here. Hopefully it'll stick now that I'm looking at the glitter. But you guys could take a piece of paper and a pencil with a star, and I want you to fill your star in with things. Pick a pencil with things that you look forward to at Christmas. You can use words or you can use pictures. In Arizona, can you come up and help Ms. Sean fill her star in? We're gonna stick some things on my star. What do you like about Christmas? Do you like, do you like these things? Do you like cookies and candy? Okay, let's stick, let's stick a picture of some cookies up on my yellow star here. Can you stick that up here? Stand up and press that up here on my star. We're going to fill our star, Kaylin and Jackson, with all sorts of things that we look forward to at Christmas. Do you like these things? What are these? Presents. Yeah, we look forward to presents at Christmas. Can you stick that up on my star? Somewhere on my yellow star. Perfect. Thank you, Arizona. What about who looks forward to getting Christmas cards? Do you like Christmas cards? Ms. Sean looks forward to her Christmas cards. Let's stick that up here on our star. Can you reach up real high? Wow, Arizona, our star is getting so, so full. How about you, Kaylin and Jackson? Are you filling your star up? Look at that. You've got one point filled up. Keep filling it up. Oh, what about the music? We've got so much beautiful music, and these are sticky on their own. You can just stick that right on the star, and I'll add some more. We've got lots of beautiful notes. So my star is getting so, so full. What about you, Jackson and Kaylin? Are you filling your star? Do you think your star is going to be able to hold everything you hope for at Christmas? 
If you could draw everything you think your star is going to hold everything, let's do just a little bit more, Arizona. I really look forward to getting together with people. Let's put some people up there. Oh, you want to do another present? Okay, I do have another present. We really like the presents. Okay, you stick the present, and I'll do the people. I don't know. I don't know if my star or even my Christmas will have enough time or place to hold everything that I think will bring me peace, everything that I think I need. But you know what? There's something very special about the God that we love. You want to hold that one while we talk? You can hold that one, sweetie. Go sit back with Mama. There's something very special about the God we love and the God who loves us. Yes, Kaylin? Exactly right. Celebrating Jesus' birth. So God knows. He knows what we want, and he knows what we look forward to. He knows it even before we draw it in our star or before we think it in our heads or we feel it in our hearts. He knows all of that, but he also, he also knows exactly what we need. And that's why he gave us Jesus. He gave us Jesus and he put Jesus right in the center of our star and in our, the center of our Christmas. Jesus is our Prince of Peace, and he is all we need this Christmas. Even though God knows everything else we hope for, Jesus is the one who fills our Christmas. Can you guys pray with me? And then you can take your stars back to your seats and finish coloring. Can you pray with me, Arizona? Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for Jesus, thank you for Jesus, for Jesus my Prince of Peace. My Prince. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, thanks for listening and thanks for helping. I'll take that page. Thank you. people today. Um, but today is also the last Sunday in our Advent season. And as Advent peoples, Advent is the season of waiting. And as we are waiting, um, it, it can be kind of tiring to wait, I think. It can be stressful to wait. It can be kind of push us down as we wait. Well, in the old days, the people of the church, they waited during the season of Advent too. And it was a long, long haul for many of them as they dealt with all the different things that go on in the world, which not, not much different from what we have today. During this last week of Advent, what they did was they would come together around their Advent wreath and each night they would have a prayer to help them remember what they were waiting for, the celebration of the birth of Christ. And they would use that prayer, and that prayer became a song. It became a hymn. And what you see on the screen right now are the Latin words to a very familiar hymn, O Come, uh, o come Emmanuel. And these these words of this prayer formed what they called the O Antiphons. People came together to remember, again, what Jesus did for them and what he was bringing to them each Christmas. And tonight we're going to use these prayers in English um, to help us uh, remember the celebration that we are going to be encountering tonight and tomorrow. We will use these prayers to prepare ourselves to welcome once again the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
wisdom proceeding from the mouth of the Most High, pervading and permeating all creation, mightily and sweetly ordering all things, come and teach us the way of understanding. Hear the word of God. But those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Is there anyone here this morning who feels that his or her life is not mightily and sweetly ordered? Is there anyone here who suddenly finds themselves saying, all I have are answers that I don't trust to questions I don't understand. Is there anyone here today who is searching for wisdom that will not turn out? And in the end, it will be simply vanity or deception or just more human folly. Then I say to that person, brother, sister, take heart. The wisdom from above now comes down to us. He comes from the highest of heaven into our world, down into our manger, down to the cross. Emmanuel, God with us, knows all things, and he knows each one of you. He comes to teach you God's wisdom, the foolishness that is the way of wisdom. He is God with us, and he is with you too. So we rejoice and we sing. Adonai, and ruler of the house of Israel, who appeared to Moses in the burning bush and gave him the law on Sinai. Come and with an outstretched arm redeem us. Hear the word of God. For when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. Is there anyone here this morning who feels that he or she is still trapped in an ancient bondage, much like the bondage of Israel in Egypt? Is there anyone here who feels that they are a slave to sin, to guilt, to death? That promise of a new ruler and a new law is only the promise of another oppression. Who here fears that no one can guide them through the wilderness into the new promised land, the promised land of true freedom in our Lord Jesus Christ? Well, I say to that person, brothers, sisters, take heart. When the fullness of time had come, God came. He came born of a woman born under the law to redeem all of us who are under the law. His name is Emmanuel, God with us, and he is with you too. And we sing. Oh. 
a root of Jesse, standing as an ensign before the peoples, before whom all kings are mute, to whom the nations will do homage. Come to deliver us and delay not. As the word of God says, Is there anyone here today who feels that they simply have no more life within them? Is there anyone here who feels used up, burnt out, exhausted? And not only that, but they fear that the whole people of God are nothing but dead wood. Then we say to you, brothers and sisters, look. From the dead stump of the failure, God raises up a new and a living sprout. He comes to bring life into you. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. And he is with you too. So let us sing and rejoice. O key of David and scepter of the house of Israel, you open and no one can close. You close and no one can open. Come and rescue the prisoners who are in darkness and the shadow of death. Jesus says to us, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Is there anyone here today who feels locked out of the house of life? so that they cannot enter the peace and joy within? Is every door of opportunity seemingly locked tight against you so that you cannot open it, even the door to God? Then we say to you, brothers, sisters in Christ, look, here the key who opens his heavenly kingdom comes to you. Here is the door. Enter through it and be saved. That door is Emmanuel, God with us, and he is with you too. Let us sing and rejoice. O day spring, splendor of light everlasting, and sun of righteousness, come and enlighten those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Hear now the word of God. The light, the light shines, shines in darkness, darkness and, the and the darkness has not, not overcome it. Is there anyone here this morning who thought that they could hide their wickedness in the darkness, but now realize that the darkness possesses them. 
And even though you may once have hated the light, you now know that only the light can save you from this place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then we say to that person, brother, sister, take heart. The sun of righteousness shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome him. He comes to give you his righteousness. In him, you will be like the light of the sun. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. And he is with you also. So let us rejoice and let us sing. King of the nations, the ruler they long for, the cornerstone uniting all people. Come and save mankind whom you formed out of clay. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. The people the fell, fell and the floods came and, and the winds blew and beat on the house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them like, like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell. Is there anyone here this morning who feels that they have never in all their life had a firm foundation to live upon, who feel that their life is just a series of moments on shifting sand, that neither nation, nor family, nor friends, nor even the church has given you any solid ground upon which to stand, who feels that their life is clay and that life is crumbling around them, and we say to you, brother, sister, take heart. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one that they have laid and that has been laid, the foundation of Jesus Christ. Against him, even the gates of hell cannot prevail. He is Emmanuel, God with us, and he is with you. So we rejoice and we sing. Emmanuel, our King and Lawgiver, the desire of all nations and their Savior, come and save us, O Lord our God. We rejoice in the word of God. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Is there anyone here this morning who feels as though life has left them without hope, that they're afraid to dream, afraid to wish for anything? Is there anyone here this Christmas whose list is empty because they no longer know what to ask for, because they no longer know what could bring meaning or purpose, hope or joy, peace or love? Is there anyone here this morning who longs to know a life that is not just a slow dying, who yearns for the desire of every nation, the desire of their own heart? And I say to that person, brother, sister, take heart. Emmanuel comes, and in his presence is joy and peace and life abundant. Because he knew how to die, he can teach you how to live. The gift that he brings is far greater than anything we could ask for, dream for, or even imagine. Behold, the gift he gives is himself, and in him he gives you life. He is God with us, Emmanuel. And so we rejoice and we sing. Emmanuel, God with us, is here with us in this very moment. And he is here for us to come to him, that we might come to him with our prayers. And as we do so this morning, I invite you, are there any prayer requests that we'd like to bring forth this morning? Uh, one is Gene Long and uh, Stephen are home with COVID, so we ask for uh, peace and healing for them this morning. Any other prayers? Kathy. Little Emily, who we've been play, praying for with leukemia after three weeks in the hospital, is home for Christmas. Oh. Ah, great to hear. Thanks. We give a prayer of thanks for that. We also give a prayer of thanks that the Beesons are back with us today. We thank you very much for, uh, thank God for bringing them back from uh, their little troubles this week uh, with illness. Any other prayer requests? David. And for David, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have David here. Let us rise and come to our Lord in prayer. O come, O come, Emmanuel, that the church, your people Israel, and the whole world may rejoice in the splendor of your appearing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O wisdom, proceeding from the mouth of the Most High, Fill your church with your spirit. Sustain and order its proclamation and its, works, and its works of charity, especially in the presence of its enemies. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Emmanuel, the ransom of your people Israel, deliver also your persecuted church from torment. Keep it patient, faithful, and steadfast. Help us to honor their witness and provide for their needs. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Adonai, ruler of the house of Israel, rule also in the hearts and the lives of your people in this congregation. 
Give us your word and show us your glory. Come and make our hearts glad. Lord, in your mercy. O oh, bright and morning star, you gladden the hearts of those who sit in darkness. Shine upon all who are overwhelmed by grief, despair, doubt, anger, and confusion, hatred, or unbelief. Come and lead them into the brightness of your holy love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O King of nations, the ruler they long for, unite all people under your glorious and gentle reign. Teach us those th the things that make for peace. Come and save us all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Root of Jesse, you stand as an ensign for the, before the peoples. Guard and guide all who stand in harm's way in defense of justice and freedom. Come quickly and deliver them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Key of David, you opened what no one can close. You close what no one can open. Free those imprisoned by the powers of sin, evil, and death. We especially lift up all that we continually pray for in first notes. We thank you for, for blessing, for the blessing of healing for Emily. We lift up Dick and Mary, for Shirley, Ray, Lloyd, for Debbie, for Blake, for Paul, and Jean and Stephen. We lift up those whose homes may look different this Christmas Eve, whether it be from illness, from death or strife. We lift them and those in our hearts. Come, Lord, and close the path to misery. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we ask you graciously answer our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns as one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now boldly taught by our Lord, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now as we uh, worship God by giving back a portion of the offering of, of the treasure he has given us through our offering.
The Lord be with you all. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this as often as you eat in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now as we prepare for distribution. Thank you. 
Please rise for our prayer. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I now ask you to remember those words you saw on the screen earlier in the service. These are the Latin words of that prayer that we've been praying throughout this service. And I want to share with you the message of hope and joy that is embedded, hidden, if you would, within those prayers. Here you see the antiphons in their original Latin form. They're called the O antiphons because they all begin with the word O. But it's not the O that's important. It's actually the second word that's most important. The second word of each prayer is a title for the coming Savior. They are the Latin words sapientia, adonai, radix jesse, clavis david, oriens, Rex Gentium, Emmanuel. These are the words that translate into wisdom. Adonai, root of Jesse, key of David, dayspring, king of nations, and Emmanuel. And this is the message. If you were to read the letters of which each prayer starts backwards from the last to the first, they spell out a word, uh, two words. Arrow cross. The final prayer that begins, the one that begins, O Emmanuel, is traditionally prayed on the 23rd of December. The following evening, of course, is Christmas Eve. The promises have been heard as we celebrate Emmanuel's birth once again. If you look back on all the prayers during this service, and you recall those promises, you'll discover the hidden message of which I spoke. Emmanuel's response to your Advent longing for his presence in your life. Because in Latin, arrow cross means tomorrow I will be there. As we've said over and over in this service, Emmanuel, God with us, we rejoice because God is with you also. He is here right now with all of us. St. Paul writes in the book of Romans, in his letter to the Romans, May the hope of God fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, given to you through Emmanuel, God with us. As we go out into the world this day, as we prepare to celebrate the birth of our Savior tonight, we go with the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. I mentioned at the beginning of the service that there were a number of birthdays being celebrated, and one of those is Trish Smelter. Let us wish her a happy birthday. depart into the world, let us joyfully proclaim God's word and, and enthusiastically, enthusiastically share Christ's love. Amen.